Save up to $50 at CrimsonTrace.com. Laser sighting systems from Crimson Trace will make you a more accurate and confident shooter. No personal protection firearm is fully equipped without a laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. Visit CrimsonTrace.com November 29th through December 25th and save up to $50 on the one tool no personal protection firearm should be without. A Crimson Trace laser sight. Save up to $50 Black Friday through Christmas Day at CrimsonTrace.com. Broadcasting on more than 140 great radio stations across the greatest country on the planet. Welcome to the number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Tom Gresham's Gun Talk is on the air. Imagine skiing for miles as fast as you can, then having to shoot a rifle on target. That's exactly what twin biathletes Lanny and Tracy Barnes do. They're here today to talk about the sport and their hopes of making the 2014 Winter Olympics. Also, back in 2011, Wisconsin became the 49th state to issue concealed carry permits. Just two years later, they've issued 200,000 permits. Wisconsin Carry's president explains why. All this and more coming up on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Call us now at 1-866-825-5486. That's 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Oh, man, we do have a lot of stuff going on today. Man, that's... uh... That's quite the lineup. And we actually just added another guest. I mean, just minutes ago, we picked up another guest we'll be having in, oh, an hour and a half or so. It's uh, full, 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 packed. But we have left some holes in the middle of it for you. In fact, right now, if you'd like to call in, be on. If there's a gun you want to talk about, a question you have, or you want to tell me about something that happened at the range, like to hear about it. Or you went hunting, you want to tell me that story. Absolutely. Our number, 866 825 Eight six or just our one Tom Talk gun that'll get you in here. Of course, we're giving away stuff as we always do. Let's see, what are we giving away? Let's check it out, Johnny. Uh, we're giving away the Optics Planet Lights and Lasers giveaway. If you go to GunTalk.com/slash/win, give it away a Crimson Trace Railmaster Universal Green Laser Light and a Crimson Trace Railmaster Universal Tactical Light from OpticsPlanet.com, and then uh, each week. Five first place winners are going to get a five or correction a ten dollar e gift certificate to opticsplanet.com. By the way, if you haven't been there, if you are a, a gear geek the way I am, opticsplanet.com. Wow, lots of cool stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, was it Black Friday coming up here? A lot of things going on. I'm kind of keeping an eye on what's going to be out there. I don't know if anybody on the gun side doing that, but I think they probably are. Just I really haven't checked, but I think there are going to be some pretty good deals out there. So if you're hearing of anything or you know anything or if there's something on your your watch list, if you will, let me know. What what would you like to buy? Or what would you like Santa to bring you for Christmas this year? I was talking to some guys at a, a gun store a couple of days ago. We're picking up a gun, new gun. Actually, we can talk about it now. That's right. They announced it. Um, This is the new Ruger Red Label. And I literally have not taken it out of the box. Uh, Looking forward, we're going to take it up to Kansas and do a shoot in a few weeks with that. And I've always been a Red Label fan. Uh, At first, they're bringing it back just in 12 gauge, and then the plan is 20 for sure. More than likely the 28, which was an utterly fascinating, fabulous gun. Love the balance on that one. If it were up to me, what I would really like to see him bring out would be a 20-gauge red label with with 30-inch barrels. When you get a 20-gauge over and under, and you put the 30-inch barrels, not the 26. I mean, and I know I've had them with 26. I've had them with 28. And the 30 just is better. And let me tell you why. 26 short barrels feel fast. It feels quick in your hands when you're you pick it up and boy it snaps it just pops up and the short barrels you can jump. And if you were hunting in really thick brush where maybe the extra 4 inches might hang up on something maybe maybe probably not really. And look, I come from a long line of my dad really likes short barrels and shotguns. And I have come to realize that that he was just a naturally good shot. He was a good athlete all the way around. I mean, anybody who bats 522 in college uh, is a good athlete. So 
I have figured out, though, that just as the Sporting Clays guys have, longer barrels help you shoot better. And there are really two reasons for that. One is that you have a longer sighting plane, if you will, although you're not, and I repeat, you're not aiming a shotgun. You're pointing a shotgun. You're just, you're looking at the bird, but you have this longer plane that gets inserted into your field of view. Again, you're not aiming down the barrel. If you are, you're probably not as good a shot as you could be. If you are seeing the barrel of your shotgun in sharp focus when you're shooting, you're probably missing more than you should be. You should be looking hard at the target or the bird. And the gun barrel just kind of appears and you pull the trigger, bang, it happens. The other reason, and this is the big reason that particularly on over and unders and double barrels, the longer barrels make you a better shooter is because people say, well, it's hard to get them started. Well, maybe, but it's also hard to get them stopped. And it's not the starting that gives us problems, honestly. It really isn't. I mean, we almost always have plenty of time to get on a bird. Even if you get surprised by it, it's pretty rare a bird's going to get out of range. You'll be able to get the gun to your shoulder and get on the bird. What causes us to miss is stopping the barrels when we're wing shooting. And the reason, there there really are a couple of reasons, but one of the big reasons why we stop the barrel or the barrels when we're swinging is because we're shooting a shotgun like a rifle. And we are aiming down the barrel. And of course, as you know, with a rifle, you want to lock everything in. You want that sight picture to be perfect before you pull the trigger. And here's what happens. You get the shotgun up and you're swinging and you get it just the perfect lead and you stop because you want to lock it in and you pull the trigger. And what happens? Well, <laughs> you stopped the barrel, but the bird or the target didn't stop. It just kept on going. And guess where you shot? Yep, you shot behind it. Now, it is true. It's, it is possible to shoot in front of it. People say, well, nobody ever shoots in front of a target. Yes, they do. But more than likely, if you're missing, you're probably shooting behind it. Um, pretty good chance of that. You could actually tell if you're watching somebody shoot, if he or she is doing this. If you see the barrels and they're swinging and they kind of jerk forward and stop, jerk forward and stop, and then jerk forward, uh, this person is trying to get a perfect sight picture. He or she is really looking hard at the gun barrel and trying to get it lined up with the bird. And this is truly one of those things that I always call it a zen kind of a thing. There's so much trust involved. You have to make yourself vulnerable. You have to say, I don't care if I miss because it's going to feel weird at first. But you just look at the bird, swing the gun, pull the trigger. Honestly, do not try to line the the barrel up. Just make it swing. Now, this assumes a gun that fits you reasonably well. Just swing. When, you know, when you're catching a, somebody throws you a ball, somebody throws you a baseball, you don't look at your hand when you catch the ball, do you? You look at the ball and you just reach out and grab it with your hand. You don't have to watch your hand. When you're hitting a ball with a baseball bat, you don't look at the bat. You just look at the ball and swing. Why are you looking at your shotgun barrel when you're trying to hit something that's moving way out there? This is the kind of thing that a really good wing shooting instructor can help you out with. Let's talk to uh, Bob. He's on line three. He's in North Dakota. Hello, Bob. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great show. You know, every other weekend I work, I drive a truck for a living, so I really look forward to Sundays here for your show. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I would kind of akin that to like a golf swing. You know, you got to have a good follow-through. But uh, That's hey, a great... Like, my yeah, a, call is, I was, uh-huh. I was wondering if you had any updates or any news on the, the recall for the Springfield the SDS. I really like that one. I own one. I have a concealed carry permit, and mm-hmm. you know, I just wondered if there's any updates on that. Really not nothing new. They are cranking them out by the gazillions now. They're turn, sending people's guns back to them. I mean, we've already gotten two of ours back. i got one more to send in. And I just procrastinated. I didn't send it in, frankly. But we got ours back pretty quickly. And we didn't like get special treatment or anything. In fact, they said, well, did you send it to so-and-so? Says, no, we just sent it in for the recall. And we've already gotten it back. So it's process. Do you have one in with Springfield now? 
Yeah, I got I got the Springfield SPS. It's really nice, and I got finally got you know laser fort from Crimson Trace, and uh, I haven't sent it in yet though. But I, I'm gonna go online and find out what I need to do. I suspect we just you know. Uh, Obviously, unload it and case it up and put it back in the in the case, and then uh, yeah, we take it to the dealer and have the dealer ship it off, or do we mail it directly, or what? Uh, they have all the information on their website. Just go to the Springfield Armory website. They've got all the info. There's no need to go to a dealer for this. You can send it straight to them, and they've got you know they tell you how to you know process it, how to do it, and all that. And I'm not sure what the turnaround is, but I I, I want to say, and this is just a a wag, okay? I'm guessing you're looking at about a two week. I mean, I, I could be off. I'm just guessing. I don't have any information from them on how long the turnaround is. In fact, they may have information on the website about. It, but that's not bad. I mean, come on. It's uh, you know, here, here's my guess, Bob. I'm guessing that's not the only gun you own. No, <laughs> no, sir. I'm a veteran. I'm a. I'm an ex-paratrooper of Navy Second Airborne, so that's not the only one. But that's, I, I would think, think one so. of my favorite concealed carry weapons, though. It is. Now, do you have the nine or the forty-five? I have the forty-five, sir. Isn't that a lovely pistol? You know, I love it. It's all around. You know, I, I also have a CZ seventy-five B, the forty caliber. Right. Uh, and, you know, I bought that one because I figured the forty caliber is kind of the best of both worlds between the speed of a nine and the knockdown mm-hmm. power of a forty-five. But I right. have to admit, I really do like this uh, this uh, XDS in, in the forty-five. You know, and I mean, obviously, it's a small pistol, and it's a light pistol, and it's going to jump a little bit. But I didn't think it was particularly punishing to shoot it. No, I I, I enjoy shooting it. It's uh, you know, it's a little loud, but when you're at the range, of course, you have hearing protection, but uh, you know, like I say, I strictly use it for concealed carry, and, and mm-hmm. in the moment, uh, you know, you're not going to be concerned about that, about uh, the noise. And it's quick to draw, and it's quick to aim, and I, I just like it. It's all around good one. Yep, I agree. Just, yeah, go ahead and go to the Springfield Army website. They'll have the information on doing the recall, and send it back to them. Get that thing done, okay? And please don't carry that gun until you get this work done on it, all right? Because there's... It's a safety issue here, and they and I and nobody wants you to be carrying that gun if it's a safety issue. So get it taken care of. Hey, I thank you for the call. And, yes, I do like yeah, the XDS. My problem is I like them all. People, I just had somebody say, well, what holster are you wearing? I, I kind of had to look. I get, I just I have to play with all these different holsters. No, I get to, okay? I do this for you, only for you. We try out all these different guns. <laughs> Go to our YouTube site. Uh, Check out Gun Talk's channel on YouTube. You can see all the stuff we do there. Be right back. Save up to $50 at CrimsonTrace.com. Laser sighting systems from Crimson Trace will make you a more accurate and confident shooter. No personal protection firearm is fully equipped without a laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. Visit CrimsonTrace.com November 29th through December 25th and save up to $50 on the one tool no personal protection firearm should be without. A Crimson Trace laser sight. Save up to $50 Black Friday through Christmas Day at CrimsonTrace.com. Have you ever held a Walther? Walther handguns are an extension of your hand. From the moment you hold the ergonomic grip of a Walther, you feel the difference. Today, Walther continues its long tradition of expertise in firearm design with the introduction of three incredible new handguns. The smooth PPQM2, the tough PPX, and the cool PPKS22. Log on now at WalthurArms.com. Walther at your favorite retailer. Here's the deal. We're ammo to go. Ammo? You need it. We've got it. Low prices. You want it? We've got it. Selection and fast shipping. Yeah, we've got that too. Rifle ammo, pistol ammo, tracers, magazines, targets, ammo cans. Come on. Sure, we've got all that. Primers, pepper spray, knives. Hey, I'm just getting started. You need it. We've got it. Ammotogo.com. Ammotogo.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. 
Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit VanishingParadise.org. That's VanishingParadise.org. The Ruger LC380 is the perfect pairing of the award-winning LC9 pistol and the popular 380 auto cartridge. The LC380 is the same size as the LC9, yet offers reduced recoil, making it Ruger's lightest recoiling personal protection pistol yet. It features a dovetailed high-visibility three-dot sight system, seven-round magazine and finger grip extension floor plate, manual safety, and loaded chamber indicator. The Ruger LC380, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Get to our website and register for the OpticsPlanet.com Lights and Lasers Giveaway. Each week, five winners will get a $10 e-gift certificate to OpticsPlanet.com. Grand prize winner gets a Crimson Trace Railmaster Universal Green Laser Sight and a Universal Tactical Light from OpticsPlanet.com. Enter today at www.guntalk.com slash win through November 29th. Good luck. Now here's Tom. All righty. Well, of course, you're hearing all the coverage of 50 years since JFK was assassinated. What you may not have put together is that that was really the catalyst for the Gun Control Act of 1968. It was the assassination of JFK, Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert Kennedy. Before the passage of the Gun Control Act of 1968, you could order a firearm from Sears and they would mail it to your home. There was no minimum age to buy a gun. You, a 10-year-old could go into the hardware store or the gas station that would sell guns and buy a gun and ammo, and there really were no problems. Things changed after 68, and what's interesting is that we now have a lot of the gun ban groups saying, well, yes, we've had 50 years of this, and we've had a bunch of extra gun laws, gun control laws passed since then. But, you know, it really hasn't done much, and we really want more. And I look at it and go, well, holy cow, look, look, at, look at the cities that have repressive gun control laws and their crime rates. Chicago being a good example, Washington, D.C., New York City. Gun control laws don't reduce crime. Never have, never will. There's not one example of gun control laws uh, reducing crime. Now, there are gun laws that have reduced crime, like concealed carry. Uh, I guess that's a gun law, where good people can carry guns for their own protection, where women can keep people from raping and abducting and kidnapping them and killing them. That's a good move. People say, well, it doesn't happen that often. Actually, it happens a lot more than you think. I was also talking to a fellow at the gun store, and he was saying, what's new? What's new? I said, well, there's going to be a new cartridge. There's some other things going on. But it was interesting. I've just had this conversation recently with a couple of people, and then I was reading at John Barsness book. We're going to have John on before too long. Uh, and he was writing about some of these smaller, milder, moderate calibers, two fifty seven Roberts, the six fives, that kind of thing. I think, it's interesting, I think as you get older, which is to say you have more experience as a hunter, you don't feel the need to have a big wampum stomp of magnum. Part of that may be that you have confidence in your ability to put the bullet in the right place. I don't know, maybe so. Let's go to line two. Bill's with us, Kansas City, Missouri. Hello, Bill. What What's the deal with the post office and you? Well, 
time last year, or first of the year, National Rifle Association had a little promotion going where you could join for one year for $25, and they would send you a gift card from Bass for Bass Pro for $25. Okay. So I tried to get some of my friends to join, but they said, no, that's a ripoff. You won't get no card. So anyway, I decided to do it just to show them that it was real. Okay. So I did, and I waited and waited. To make a long story short, three times I called Bass, uh, called National Rifle Association said I didn't get my card. They said, uh-huh. well, we sent it out. So the third time, I told them, I said, then send it to my mother-in-law's address in Springfield. They did. Four days later, she had the card. Now, what? I, I, can't, I can't help but think that uh, some people in the Postal Service recognize those envelopes coming from, because that card had no name on it or anything. Anybody could have used it. Oh, so what you've got is a $25 gift card that anybody could use, and... It is your idea that maybe somebody in the post office is identifying these and taking off with them, and now they've got 25 bucks every time they pick that envelope up. That's it. That's well, it. we obviously, we don't have any way of knowing that. And I would, you know, one part of me says, well, I would sure hate to think that. Yeah. Uh, the other part of me says, yeah, stuff happens. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well, what you what'd you get with your 25 bucks? I got some ammo. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> you betcha. Yeah. Oh, and you probably spent more than 25 bucks, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. All right. Well, look, I appreciate the call, uh, Bill. Thank you for that story. Um, it's been, man, how long has it been? 20 years? No, it's not. Two years. Two years since uh, Wisconsin got concealed carry. And coming up, we're going to have a story about that and a group there that has done something very interesting. And, and basically, it's why they have so many people who've gotten carry permits there. What if, even though other instructors are charging for it, what if people could get their concealed carry permits and take the class for free? Oh, I just see it. Concealed carry instructors everywhere are twitching. They're getting nervous ticks right now. Oh, but, 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 my, but my money. Yeah, but what if people could get it for free? Would more get it? We're going to find out. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. <laughs> Just got an email. Uh, Steve, thanks. It says we, his subject line is gun control laws. He says we need more criminal control laws. Well, I think you got it figured out there, partner. Uh, by the way, if you want to shoot me an email, tom at guntalk.com, that'll get you in there. Don't forget to go to guntalk.com slash win to enter for a chance to win the cool Crimson Trace package coming to you from opticsplanet.com. Um, what happens in a state when everybody predicts if you if you were to let regular people, common people, carry loaded guns, if you let just regular old people pack heat. Well, wouldn't they just shoot everybody? Wouldn't they just get mad when they're driving and just shoot people? Wouldn't they kill people over parking places? Wouldn't they? Well, you know the answer. Well, we have yet another example of what does and what doesn't happen. Nick Clark's joining us right now with Wisconsin Carry. Nick, thanks for joining us. Tom, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, how long have you had concealed carry in Wisconsin, and how many permits? So the law went into effect on November 1st. The uh, law was passed in the summer of 2011, went into effect on November 1st, 2011. And since that time, we've got uh, over 200,000 permits. I think we passed 200,000 about a month ago, so we're probably running you know, 205,000, 210,000 permits, which uh, I think equates to about, uh, I think we're running close to 3 to 5% of the adult population in Wisconsin. 
Wow. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think, I mean, well, let me ask you before I, I weigh in on this. Why so many? Because that's a pretty hefty percentage in only a couple of years. You know, there's been some interesting things here in Wisconsin. A few years before, now, and concealed carry had been in the queue for about a decade. So frustratingly so, a lot of people had been expecting this. You know, we were the 48th state to allow uh, concealed carry. Uh, Obviously, not all 48 of those states have shall issue. So I think we're probably the 45th or 46th that's shall issue. But there were some interesting things in state, um, just, uh, you know, notable things. For example, in Milwaukee, there was some, uh, some... uh, they called it, you know, the wilding, the flash mobs, the rioting outside of State Fair one year, about a year before mm-hmm. concealed carry passed, mm-hmm. where just, I mean, literally law-abiding folks going to the fair of all places ended up in a situation where they were being attacked for, for literally no reason. And then there was uh, a couple notable instances where a you know, crazed lunatic uh, went on a, uh, decided to uh, inflict mass casualties. We had the Sick Temple incident. Uh, where a lunatic there went in and mm-hmm. started to uh, shoot. We had the Azana Salon. So there was just a couple of things I think really said to people, hey, you know what? Um, and a few years before that, that, there was a church in Brookfield where there was a mass shooting probably five or six years ago. I think people really said, you know what? Uh, there really is uh, no place where you can be sure that you're, you're safe, and the only person you can count on to protect yourself is yourself. And I think that's really what's driven the, uh, what's really driven the, the permits here in Wisconsin. Yeah, and I think we're nationally up to nine, nine close to 10 million now. You know, but you're being just a little bit modest because Wisconsin Carey had uh, at least something to do with these big numbers with because you guys are actually giving away the classes. Yeah, we, we advocate for, I mean, we strongly advocate for training. We think that, you know, and, and I myself, I consider myself an expert, but, but, but I think daily of all the extra things that I wish I had the time to do in terms of training. But we advocated for constitutional carry here in Wisconsin. Uh, we don't think that your right to, to self-defense should be limited by having to prove to the government that you've uh, taken a class or, or paid a permit tax. But with that said, uh, it is the law in Wisconsin that you have to have proof of training. And our best uh, uh, as a nonprofit and and in advancing our mission to advance the right to carry, we think the more people that we can usher into the carry movement, the better. So we offer free concealed carry training classes across the state. 2011, we had over 5,000 people uh, through those classes. 2012, or excuse me, uh, 2012, we had over 5,000 people. Uh, 2013 here, we're probably looking at close to 5,000, 6,000 people. So uh, significant, I mean, that's that's at $100 a class, you're talking about over a million dollars of training that we've given away. Uh, we've gotten people into the class that otherwise may not have gotten into the carry movement, didn't know how, didn't mm-hmm. know where to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we do these uh, feedback forums at the end of our class uh, asking people, you know, how did you hear about the class? Do you own a gun? And there's about 50-50 uh, people that didn't own a gun but wanted to, didn't know where to start, and, and our class was their option for them, and they got their permit and they got into the carry movement. So we think that that, that number of people is a significant percentage that may not otherwise have gotten into the movement, and that's not just 10,000 people who have the right to protect themselves and their families. That's 10,000 people who are going to stand up if they ever try to take this right away and, and stand with us. Well, speaking of that, I mean, and you're exactly right. The more people who carry, then the more people who want to protect their ability to carry, want to protect gun rights. I I had this weird thought while you're talking there. I was thinking about how over the last 20 years we've had all these people, millions and millions of people get their carry permits. And you you were talking about the attack at the Sikh uh, temple and other events. We sometimes talk about the fact that our, the CNN concept of 24-hour news and what happens in another part of the country feels like it happens to you, you know, there's a certain element of that which probably has prompted people to say, okay, that happened over there. I realize that's not where I live, but that could happen here. And so people internalize that and say, we're going to go get prepared. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, and it's not about, um, you know, I keep a fire extinguisher in my truck, and I don't think I'm going to have a fire uh, likely, but but it's there for protection. It's there just in case, and, and there's no downside to it. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of upside to it. You know, the, the antis would say that there's a downside, but that's based upon myth. But they're really, you're not sacrificing anything for that extra level of, of, of security. Uh, in the rare event, uh, and when I say rare, you know, I don't know what the statistics would be, but over the course of your lifetime, maybe over the course of your entire 
entire life, there's a pretty good opportunity that you might have to use your gun in self-defense on a yearly basis, probably not. But, but, but in addition, I mean, there's this deterrent factor. I mean, when criminals know, and we've had some great instances here in Wisconsin, uh, textbook instances since the concealed carry law passed, where a law-abiding citizen with their gun was able to protect someone. I think we're probably up to, just in the last couple of years, you know, seven well-documented instances. And those are the ones that we know about, because we also know from statistics that, uh, you know, a high percentage of the time, a gun is not fired when it's used in self-defense, right. and it goes unreported. So exactly. it's just been a great, uh, it, the rollout's been great here, the execution has been great in Wisconsin, and it's really provided protection for people. We had an instance in West Dallas where a gentleman uh, was coming home from third shift late at night, saw uh, a woman being beaten at a bus stop by a man, uh, stopped, got out of his car, uh, concealed carry license holder, drew his weapon, ordered the man to stop. The man stopped, no shots fired. That is an instance where a gun prevented violence, and and there's a, a identical or a very similar situation in the same uh, city, West Dallas, a year before, where the mayor of Milwaukee was at the state fair, left state fair, intervened in a domestic violence situation, and he was beaten mercilessly. A very um, well reported story nationally. So we see that the gun actually made for a less violent situation compared to a situation when there wasn't a gun; it was more violent. Well, and that's, that's always been the case. We uh, All of our national stats we get, even from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, says that you're 50% less likely to be injured in an attack if you defend yourself with a firearm. Hey, wait, hold on just a second here, Nick. I come back. I want to have you tell us what's going on now legislatively. We've got two years of experience. We've got 200,000 people with carry permits. How does that affect the legislature and what's going on there? And I think there are lessons for all of us when we listen to this to say, okay, we got to pay attention. We may have concealed carry, but now what? That's always the question. What are we going to do now? Be right back. Long range shooting is challenging and fun, but most precision rifle bullets aren't right for hunting. Nosler's AccuBond LR long range bullets are designed specifically for hunters. They combine the incredible on game performance AccuBond bullets have delivered around the world with incredible long range properties. High ballistic coefficients make for bullets which shoot flat and defy the winds. The sleekest, flattest shooting bonded hunting bullet ever designed. Nosler's AccuBond LR. For more info, visit Nosler.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. The world can be a dangerous place. Gear up with the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. Equipping your firearm with laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com and receive a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge, Crimson Trace. Hello. Hi, honey. What are you looking for in the safe? Oh, I was just... Wait a second. How'd you know I was in the safe? Oh, because I put in Liberty's safe alert security system. So now it sends me an alert whenever the door is open. Well, aren't you smart? But that's not all, honey. Safe alert also warns me when the temperature is too cold or too hot. It even tells me when the safe has been jostled. I can even find out what the humidity is inside the safe. Best part is, honey, it works in any safe. So you knew right away when I opened the door? How does it let you know? Well, it sends an alert directly to my cell phone. I've got a three-year plan, so it's only thirty-nine ninety-five a year for monitoring. And it only took a few minutes for me to install. Now we don't have to worry when we're out of town. We'll know what's going on with the safe. And I'll know my guns are safe. And my jewelry and the family photos. Yep. We'll add your phone for free so we both get the alerts. For more information on Safe Alert, go to LibertySafe.com. That's LibertySafe.com. What's that? It's my Trigicon. What's a Trigicon? Only the best rifle scope in the world. <laughs> Says who? Uh, how about the U.S. Marine Corps, Special Forces, Navy SEALs? You heard of these guys? Sure. Well, they're all using Trigicons. Let me see it. 
Wow, this is really sharp. And a lot of professional hunters are using Trijicon, too. You probably caught it on some TV and radio shows. Yeah, I have heard some of them swear by their Trijicon. I swear by it. You know, I could have been a Navy SEAL. Well, the closest you're going to get now is buying a Trijicon. Hey. Trijicon is the brand of rifle scopes that more and more hunters are swearing by. That's because every Trijicon is handcrafted using the finest optic materials. The bright aiming point can guarantee you a great hunt from dawn to dusk. Get your Trijicon at a dealer near you or visit them on the web at Trijicon.com. That's T-R-I-J-I-C-O-N.com. Trijicon. Brilliant aiming solutions. TopGunSupply.com carries a large selection of fine firearms and accessories. Get all the parts you need for your Sig Sauer, HK, and Glock pistols. Grips, screws, recoil springs, sights, barrels, magazines, holsters. The list goes on. Our knowledgeable sales staff, professional service, great prices, and super fast shipping are here to help you. Check us out today. TopGunSupply.com. TopGunSupply.com. I'm a gun owner. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. You know, I don't think that guns are scary things. Visit us online at www.guntalk.com. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. 866-825-5486. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, back to gun talk. All right, talking to Nick Clark from Wisconsin Carry. They've had uh, carry for two years. 200,000 people have carry permits. And then uh, you look at it and say, okay, so like, what now? What do we do now? And you go to the legislature. Nick, what's going on in the legislature there? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, we just had, uh, there was an Assembly Bill 9 that we had um, last year. This bill was introduced, and it really only provided privileges to law enforcement and off-duty law enforcement. So we, we, we kind of worked to kill it last year. This year, when it was introduced in the spring, reached out to the legislator and said, hey, is there an opportunity here to expand the carry rights for law-abiding citizens? And he was willing to work with us, Joel Kleefish, a great gun supporter here in the state. He was mm-hmm. willing to work with us and uh, proposed two amendments to this bill. So around this, this fall, when the bill came up, the legislative session, added two amendments, one that would have really protected private property rights, but the most important one would have expanded the right to carry for concealed carry license holders to school grounds as well. Right now, school grounds, uh, it's a felony to carry on to school grounds, even though the, the, the federal gun-free school zone statute specifically provides an exception for license holders, but this, that, that's up to the state. So here in Wisconsin, uh, you go to pick up your kids from school. If you forget to, you drive in that parking lot, you forget to unload your gun and put it in a case, you are committing a felony. Now, a lot of people I know are, are, are a little bit lazy and, and think that they're not going to get caught. So we know that there's law-abiding citizens of Wisconsin that are potentially exposing themselves to felonies. And this amendment to AB9 would have extended those protections to uh, concealed carry license holders. Now, schools can still have posted their buildings. So then you could go to your local school district and say, or school board and say, hey, I, I pay taxes for these schools and I can't ex- exercise my right to carry there. But that's an argument you could have at the local level. But what so what, done, what happened? What happened to the bill? You need to carry on to school grounds. What happened to the bill? So frustratingly, the bill was uh, abruptly pulled from committee in uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, it was up for committee vote. Um, we would had went out to membership and had membership contacting legislators. Uh, the bill was kind of on the fast track, and then uh, about 12 hours before the committee hearing, the bill was pulled with uh, little explanation and uh, just you know asking around. It, 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 and, and from my sources, it, it's been clear to me that the support, you know, Wisconsin, there's a gubernatorial election coming up next fall. Uh, and and there's some people with uh, aspirations of higher offices here in Wisconsin. And I think uh, what happened was that the um, leadership pulled the bill because it really would have been considered controversial. Now, I don't know what's controversial about letting these 200,000 people who <laughs> pass background checks carry right. when they pick up their kids from school in the car. But uh, Well, you know, and, 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 and look, and, and Nick, the thing we got to do now is get the word out to all the 200,000 people of those and say, look, you, you, you may be committing a felony and not aware of it. Nick, thank you so much. Wisconsin Carry. If you're in Wisconsin, you need to be aware of this group and participate. I appreciate your help, man. By the way, uh, Gary, James, don't go anywhere. You're up next. We're going to go straight to the calls. And then we're going to be bringing you a couple of, believe it or not, twins, really cute twins, who can just kick your rear end because they are true athletes, both of them trying to get to the Olympics. That'll be coming up here. Don't go far. Gun Talk coming right back. 
You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. advice and questions are the driving force of gun talk visit us online at www.guntalk.com call tom now at 866-TALK-GUN 866-825-5486 let us know what you think about the gun related issues of the day now back to gun talk all right back with you let's go straight to the phones line three james is with us out of oklahoma hello james who's this is calling you on your telephone I don't know. He gave me his name, but I, it just went right through my head and out the other ear. Uh, <laughs> so there, somebody they, says they're uh, with the NRA, huh? Yeah, he said he was with the NRA, and he was calling about uh, wanting, you know, for me to support their cause against the NSA or something. And uh, the first time he called, I was on the road coming from mm-hmm. California, coming back from a funeral, and I couldn't talk to him. So he called back the next day. I couldn't believe it. And... uh he said he was with the NRA, and then I got thinking, well, the NRA does not solicit money over the telephone. They never have with well, them for 13 a- years. Actually, sometimes they do. Um, are you a member of the NRA? Yeah, I have been okay. for 13 years. What you may want to do is contact the NRA and say, look, guys, put me on your do not call list. Uh, you know, I'm a member. Don't want you to be calling me. You can also ask if you're getting a lot of the e- uh, not emails, but the, uh, the snail mail. It's filling up your mailbox with solicitations from the NRA. And I know people sometimes yeah. complain about that. You could ask them to uh, cut that down and stop sending well, you that, that stuff. Some of that I, I go ahead and, you know, I've, I've donated money before different sure. causes. But uh, this one over the telephone, just it just kind of griped me a little bit. Well, I have a basic rule. If somebody calls me on the phone, I don't do business with them. If I call yeah. them, I'll do business with them. And if they call me, I say, look, here's the deal. That sounds very interesting. Send me something in the mail. Well, of course, they won't because they don't get their commission off of it. And I absolutely, 100% positively refused to make a donation or do business with anybody who calls me, and I don't know them. Just done deal. Not doing it. I'm just not going to give my uh, credit card number over the telephone. No. Huh? There I'll you go. Send you, a check I, in the mail if they send me a letter, you know. Well, no. that sounds fair, but yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. But I think it, it may be legit, but I'm still, I'm not, I'm not giving them any money if they call me. I just talked to Gary on two out of Nevada. Gary, you're up. Hey, Tom, I got yes, a shotgun sir. question for you. Okay. Yeah, the, everybody knows about the Ipsca Model 37 pump action. Right. Been around forever. Really sweet gun. Years ago, I saw a gun, <clears throat> the dead ringer for it, is made by Remington. Yep, Model 17. And I understand. Uh, I don't remember what the model number was or anything. It was a sweet little 20 gauge, but I understand there was some kind of patent to. Uh, uh, yeah, there something was some, back then, some, uh, some kind of a deal. It's actually designed by John Browning. Uh, it's called the Remington 17. Uh, and they, let's see, produced it, I think, through 37, 1937. Then it was taken over by Ithaca. Uh, after the patent expired, and Remington stopped making them, and then they called it the 37. So, But, yeah, the 37s and then the 17s are delightful. So I think something tells me. No, I'm thinking about something else. I was thinking maybe the parts are not interchangeable, and they may or may not be. I don't know. But, yeah, Remington had something called the Model 17 that became the Ithaca Model 37. Thank you, Gary. Let me run down to Joe real fast in Amarillo, Texas. Joe, i got one minute. Go, please. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, where the state of Virginia uh, offers concealed carry permits online. You can just do it all online, uh, even if you live in another state. And I just want to ask you about that. Uh, yeah, I have not looked into that. It's possible. But, you know, honestly, i got to tell you, if you're in Texas, I would suggest you – I mean, the Texas permit is honored in a lot of states – it's not a bad idea to go get the, the actual class. So go to uh, a concealed carry class, concealed handgun license class in Texas. Take the class, get that permit, and then it's good in a lot of states. And you'll have at least the beginning of a little bit of training. So there you go. Hey, when we come back, uh, you're going to be hearing from well, some pretty interesting folks. We're going to have some twins who are trying to get to the Olympics in that crazy sport of biathlon, skiing and shooting. I think you're going to like their explanation of what it really is like. 
No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.